What's good, sexies? It's your boy here, back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes, and there's actually quite a lot of stuff going on in the game today. So if we head over to the notifications, you'll see that Three Hopes has actually released today. So if you pre-ordered the game digitally, or if you plan to buy a digital copy, you can go over to the eShop and download the game right now. It's already up. So definitely some good stuff there. I'm going to get a physical copy, so I'm just going to go to the store later today and pick it up. <laughs> but if you wanted to get it digitally, you can get it right now. So definitely make sure you cop that. Okay, we also have the Yuri who won the Garland Moon Cup. Going to be given out to all players for free right now. I actually think he's in my gift box. So we can go over there. Yep, there he is right there. So we're going to go ahead and accept that. Free copy of Yuri, pretty good. Okay, we can also take a look at what else is in here. We have a double special heroes banner, which we're going to go ahead and break down in just a sec. And then I guess the last thing that we got here is Resplendent Carla coming out soon. I don't know what it is with Faye and Carla, but <laughs> they really seem to like Carla, even though she was a complete nobody in FE7. All of the love they've given to Carla should have been given to Karel instead, because he's basically... What'd they call him? Like the Sword Saint or the Sword Demon or something like that in Fire Emblem 7? He was this badass dude, but I, I don't know why Carla's stealing all of his fire. Uh, regardless, let's go ahead and take a look at this double special heroes banner. Okay, so these are the units that are going to be available. We go over to the hero check and we can see each of the colors individually. Now, just at a glance, I'm going to tell you guys, this is probably the best double special banners ever. <laughs> and the reason why is because of these two monstrosities right here. I, I can't believe they actually did both of them on the same double special heroes banner. But we're going to get into each one of them in detail. And we'll start off with red here because red is the first color. So we have Duo Krom, Gay Krom, Yaoi Krom, whatever you want to call him, accompanied by the Ninja Shinin. Now, Ninja Shinin has kind of fallen off a little bit as far as fodder goes. He used to be really good because Ninja Yumi was the best brave attacking bow in the game, but I feel like currently it's being outdone by the brave attack bow that we had on the Summer Elincia. Hers has the full 12 might because it has conditional brave attacking, and then you're still gaining attack and speed up 5 anyway. So I feel like... You're practically getting like plus 10 bonus might on that weapon as opposed to this one where you can meet a speed check to gain plus 4 true damage. But in the long haul, I'd rather just have the full 12 might and the plus 5 attack. So some people still actually prefer this one anyway because it's not conditional brave attacking. You just get it. So it could be good there if you're not going to be able to win the speed check with the other bow. But regardless, it's not quite as impressive as it was when it came out. He does still have Dead Eye and Attack and Speed Solo 4 for fodder, though, so this Shinnin is still not a bad unit to pull. Also, Lull Speed and Defense, not too bad for fodder. So, pretty good stuff from him, but of course, the main guy of this banner is going to be the Duo Krom over here. Now, what is there to really say about him? He's like a top 5 unit in the game. He's really, really ridiculous. One of the best units in basically everything you can run him in. His pair-up skill is going to raise his BST to freaking 195. So he's actually tied for the highest scoring unit in the game with this unit over here. <laughs> so literally the two highest scoring units are on the exact same banner, which is crazy to me. And another crazy thing about this Krom is that he's got to change fate, which is the highest scoring assist in the game. For some reason, it costs 500 SP. I still to this day don't know why that's the case. When other specials, like Future Vision is only 400 SP. So I don't know why To Change Fate got special treatment like that. But thanks to that, this guy has potential to score even higher if they ever release a Gold Border B skill. So like Vantage 4, Desperation 4, I don't know, Lull Level 4s, whatever. If we ever get something like that, Krom is actually going to jump into the next scoring bin beyond where he is right now. So he would actually score even higher than duo dagger who is also on this banner which is just like it's crazy to think that eventually we are going to get a gold border b skill and Krom is just going to be even more useful than he is right now as far as combat potential goes he's nuts 
He just has a guaranteed follow-up just because. Minus one special trigger. When he uses to change fate, he basically grants himself and the ally minus one special trigger. He gets all stats of five. Where do you go wrong with this guy? He's just ridiculous all around. Close salvo and times pulse, pretty good fodder. Also has dead eyes, so like... If ever there was a unit worth getting a plus 10, it's probably this unit right here. Okay, on blue, we have the New Year Regan, and she's accompanied by New Year... Or no, not New Year, but Christmas Mirabilis. So, Christmas Mirabilis, dancing unit, not really too impressive, honestly. She has most of the effects that the OG Mirabilis has, like Whimsical Dream for the debuffing. She does attack up 5 to target ally and the allies in 2 spaces of target. And the same debuff to the foes, like in the nearest foe in 4 spaces and then all foes in 2 spaces of that foe are going to suffer attack minus 5. So it's not a bad debuffing dance skill. And then her weapon is going to grant res up 3 and then also inflict attack minus 5 on any foes in 3 rows or 3 columns centered on her. Is that correct? Let me see here. If penalty is active on any foe in three column or three rows, inflicts attack minus five. Okay, so no, it's... She's debuffing them for herself. It's not like a support effect. So it just helps her fight a little better, I guess. But as far as dancers go, this Mirabilis is kind of forgettable. <laughs> not quite as interesting as the other Mirabilis, at least, because that one's a defensive mythic. She's got Bracing Stance 3, Speed Cantrip 3, and Ground Orders 3. Bracing Stance is okay, not too bad for fodder, but the rest of it is not really all that worthwhile. New Year Regan is pretty good, though. I think she is one of the better cavalry blue tome units. We do have the Bride Lelina now, though. I think Bride Lelina is probably the best one, especially considering that she can get Treachery. But this Regan can still totally hold her own. She's going to get the Insta Charge Seder Shell on turn 1 and also turn 4, which is kind of wild to think she just gets a free special twice in the fight also she gets attack and speed up six and built-in canto too so you can't really go wrong with that Seder shell of course just as good as it is on the other regan in the game and then for fodder she's got swift sparrow three and cross spur attack cross spur attack is one of the wildest fodder skills in the game so it's not bad to summon this regan for usability or if you wanted to go for fodder all right, then we come up to green, which, despite this Krom, I think, being, like, the highest scoring unit in the game and having good potential, he's one of the best arena units in the game as well. This dagger is... There's, like, arguments you could make easily to say this is the best unit in the game. In summoner duels, I don't think there's anything stronger than her duo skill. Like, you pop this duo skill and it's a game ender in summoner duels so like if ever there was another unit to plus 10 it's definitely this one so their duo skill just gives everybody pathfinder and if that wasn't good enough they just naturally have pathfinder just because <laughs> they also have this unique b skill here which costs 300 sp so that helps raise their score even higher and it has built-in null follow-up and inflicts speed and defense minus five on the foe Pretty cheesy considering they're a flyer unit and they're not supposed to have null follow-up. But <laughs> this unit just has it. So really awesome stuff. Tag and speed push 4 and attack and defense rain 3 finish off their kit. So tag and speed push 4, always good fodder if you need it. But I would say just go for merges with them if you're planning to summon on this banner. They are accompanied by the OST Lucina or Valentine Lucina, whatever you want to call her. I prefer OST Lucina, though, because <laughs> that's where this art is from. So, Lucina's really good, both for usage and fodder. She's the only unit that has Savvy Fighter, which is very good for all of the fast armored units. Gives them basically null follow-up and 30% DR. So, very good. Also, she comes with AD Near Save and Kestrel Stance 3. Both very good fodder skills as well. And for usability, she's great. She has Future Vision, which is awesome on an armored unit. So she can just go ahead and use swap and then go ahead and take another action herself. Pretty good stuff. Her weapon effect is also giving her, let's see here, speed up three. If she goes ahead and uses a movement assist like future vision, it's going to neutralize foes bonuses on 
neutralizes foes' bonuses during combat to unit and target ally or unit and targeting ally for one turn. So it's basically like a status effect there. And then if foe initiates combat, she gets all stats of 5 and then a further 40% damage reduction on their first hit, which is going to combo pretty well with Savvy Fighter. So a all-around very good unit, very powerful near save unit, and very good for fodder, very good for usage. Pretty solid for scoring as well. I believe she scores in the 190 bin. So all very good stuff there. And then finally on Colorless, <laughs> they did it again. They decided to color share the two demote heroes. So we have Zane, who is a four star, and then we have Liar, who is a four star. We're going to start off with Zane because he's got Serpentine Staff. <laughs> Basically a power crep version of the... um, What's the one that does like 10 chip damage to target and foes in two spaces? I think it's Pain. So this is basically just a souped up version of the pain staff. You do the chip damage to the target and foes in two spaces, and you also inflict deep wounds. So pretty good. One of the better inheritable staffs. It also comes with defense and res solo three and dazzling staff. So not too bad to get dazzling staff on a four star summon. He has Physic plus as well for his healing assist. But really what you want this guy for is the weapon. Very good fodder weapon for your staff units. And then finally, we have Liar over here. So Liar, I, I don't really remember too much about her. She does have Attack and Speed Catch 3, though, which is pretty juicy fodder if you're trying to get the level 4 version. So you would sacrifice Liar first, get level 3, and then sacrifice whoever has level 4, maybe, I don't know, like Legendary Claude or something like that, and then also pick up another skill that unit might have. So some definite usability with her for fodder. And her weapon effect, let's see here, gets speed up 3. If foe's HP is over 75%, gets attack and speed up 6. If her speed is better than foe's speed, she gets special cooldown charge plus 1. And she also deals plus 5 damage when dealing damage with a special. Interesting. And then she has the typical beast unit transformation effect for cavalry types. So... Not the most spectacular demote unit, honestly. She has Flashing Blade, though, for a cavalry unit, which is pretty cool. You don't really see that too often, but... Otherwise, I would say she's not really all that impressive. So, as far as which colors take the cake here, I think... Green is definitely in first place, because Dagger and Lucina is a sick combo. Followed up closely by Red, because Chrom's really good, and then Blue's definitely in third, followed by Colorless. So, a very strong double seasonal banner, and m might possibly just be the best double special banner we've ever had, ever. <laughs> because Duo Dagger and Duo Chrom is really ridiculous to have on one banner. Two of the highest scoring units, and just two of the best units straight up. So, we'll go for a free summon here. Let's see, what do I even want? <laughs> Alright, well, of course, green and red didn't show up, so I guess we'll go for blue. Possibly get a copy of Regan. I don't know. Would be nice, but probably not. <laughs> we get Ilyana instead. Okay, that's fine by me. So let me know in the comments if you're going to summon on this banner. If you're trying to go in for a plus 10, then I'm going to go ahead and cast Rally Luck on all y'all out there. So hopefully you're going to be walking out with the good juice. Get that plus 10 Yowie Krom or Duo Dagger. And that's going to wrap us up for this video. Later on today, I'm going to do my Aether Raids video for Chaos Season. And I might do a video or a live stream on Three Hopes as well. I'm, it's going to depend on how much spare time I actually have today. But we'll see. So this is your boy signing out. Take care, fellas. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see y'all again later today.